What's the difference between a carriage return and a line feed? In this video, we will take a look at the difference between Windows and Linux in terms of how to end a line of text. We will also look at some tips and tricks for converting between the Linux and Windows formats. Please help me out by hitting the subscribe button and take my breath away. Have you ever looked at a text file and it seems like the lines are running into each other? This is usually an artifact of Windows trying to read a file created on a Linux system. But when you read that same file in Linux, everything looks fine. Let's go ahead and create two files that have identical content, one using VI on a Linux machine, and then the second using Notepad on a Windows system. On my Linux system, I'm going to create a new file by doing VI Linux.txt. And then in this file, I'm going to type the following content, the quick brown fox, and then hit return, jumps over, hit return, the lazy dog. And then I'm going to go ahead and hit escape, and then colon WQ to write and quit. And now I'm going to go over on my Windows machine and create a new file using Notepad and then typing in the exact content. The quick brown fox, return, jumps over, return, the lazy dog. And then I'm going to go ahead and save this as windows.txt. I saved both of these files onto a thumb drive. So now let's jump back to our Linux box to take a look at these two files. I'm going to run the command cat on both of the files to see the output. Cat linux.txt, windows.txt. And they look pretty much the same to me except for the last line of the Windows created file. Uh, basically, it just kind of runs into the command prompt. But otherwise, everything looks fine. Now let's use the diff command to see if they match, which they should if the content is the same. So I'm going to do diff of linux.txt and windows.txt. And the results from diff basically picked out every line as being different. And it also tells us that there is no new line at the end of the Windows created file. So what's really different if we can't see any differences? So I'm going to go ahead and use the hex dump program called XXD to look at the hex representation of these files. So first one, we'll do XXD of linux.txt. So you can see here in the middle columns is the hex representation. And then on the right hand side here is the ASCII representation. And then I'm going to go ahead and do XXD of windows.txt. And as you can see from the hex dump, the two files are in fact different, right? They actually have different links. And they actually start the same. We see the ASCII representation for the characters for capital T, which is hex of 64. Then ASCII for the lowercase h, which is hex of 68. And then ASCII for the lowercase e, which is hex 65. And this keeps on going all the way until after the word fox. Um, you can see here the lowercase x is represented by hex of 78. And then in the Linux file, following that is the hex of 0a. But then if you look at the Windows file, it's actually hex 0d followed by the 0a. And if we continue on, we see that the letters continue to be the same in both files once again until we get to the word over, after which the Linux file has 0a, and then the Windows file once again has 0d and then 0a. And then we get to the end of the file, and then we see 0a for the Linux, but then it's not in the Windows created file. So what are these 0a and 0d things? Right? Like I said before, 0a is a line feed, and then the 0d is the carriage return. So for the answers, we actually have to go back in time to the days of the typewriter on dot matrix printers and so forth. If you look at an old typewriter, as you type, the hammer makes an imprint of the key of the character you want it to type onto the paper. And in the background, there's a mechanical carriage that moves the underlying piece of paper as you type. So the hammer strike doesn't write over the last character. When you reach the end of the line that you're typing, 
you basically have to push the carriage return bar, which does two things. First is the carriage return, which physically pushes the carriage mechanism back to the far left. So any new typing will happen on the left side of the paper. The second thing that happens is that the bar will also rotate the drum holding the paper. So it moves the paper to a clean line. This is also known as the line feed. So to get back to the computers, when you reach the end of a line of text and you hit the return key on a Windows machine, it mimics a typewriter in that it does two things. It puts a carriage return there and then a line feed, which is the 0D and then 0A. On a Linux machine, when you hit the return key, only a line feed is inserted to indicate the end of line. So you only see the 0A. So how do we fix this? Or do we need to fix it? If you're reading Windows created text files in Linux, VI will read the file just fine by default. Or is it? Notice the little bracket NOEOL and then bracket DOS in the status bar on the bottom. The NOEOL tells us that there isn't an end of line on that last line. And then the DOS means that VI is aware that this file uses the DOS or Windows file format for the end of line. If you are just reading the files, then probably there is not a problem. However, if you're going to be using a program to parse that Windows created file, then you might run into issues if the program is looking for the end of line, which doesn't exist on that last line. If you're reading a Linux created file in Windows, you will most likely not even notice any issues as Notepad has been updated in the mid 2010s to read the Linux end of line and interpret it properly. If you are using Notepad++ and other programming tools, these pretty much all know how to read the Linux created files properly. On older versions of Notepad, you will notice that the lines join together as there is no carriage return to start a new line. The old version of Notepad does not understand the Linux style of end of lines. So a simple way of fixing this is to basically use WordPad or Word to read in the Linux created file and then save it back out as plain text. Then it will use the Windows style. This works only if you have one or two files to convert. But if you have a whole library of files that you want to convert all together, then we need to be able to batch process this. So let's go back to our Linux command line. To convert a Windows created file to Linux, you can use the command DOS to Unix. So we can do DOS to Unix dash n windows dot text windows dash converted dot text. The dash n option is to create a new file instead of overwriting the existing file. And so the first argument is going to be the input file, which is windows.txt. And then the second argument is going to be the new file, which is windows-converted.txt. And if we look at the hex of the old file compared to the new file by doing xxd of windows.txt and then xxd of windows-converted.txt, we can see that the program stripped out all of the carriage returns, right? All the hex of zero Ds are now gone. So now this DOS created file is in the Linux style of just having a line feed. To go the other way, we can use the command Unix to DOS to change the end of line to be the combo of carriage return and line feed. So similarly, we can type Unix to DOS dash n for creating a new file, linux.txt, which is the input, and then linux-converted.txt, which is the output. So looking at the hex again by doing xxd of linux.txt and xxd of linux-converted.txt, we can confirm that the program added the 0d, which is the carriage return, to every time it sees a 0a, which is the line feed. Another way of doing this is actually in VI itself. So if we go ahead and do VI of Linux dash DOS dash format dot text, we're going to create this new file. And then the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and hit colon and then set file format equals DOS. So what this is going to do is that this is going to create an output that is in the DOS or Windows format. So as I type my text here of the quick 
brown fox, enter, jumps over, enter, the lazy dog, and then escape, colon, write, and quit. And now if we do the XXD of this new file, linux-dos-format.txt, we can see that the output has already in there the carriage return and the line feed combo right for the end of line because this is the DOS or Windows way. We can also do an XXD of linux-converted.txt, right? That's the one we just did earlier with the DOS to Linux command, and it looks just the same. And if you don't trust your eyeballs, we can run an MD5 hash on the files to prove that they are identical. So we can do MD5 sum of Linux dash star, and that will pick up the Linux dash converted dot text and the Linux dash 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 format dot text that we created. And sure enough, they have the exact same MD5. So those two files are identical. So basically, Windows and Linux handles the end of line differently. Windows mimics the old typewriters and uses a carriage return and a line feed, whereas Linux only uses line feeds and no carriage return. If you're just reading a text file, they may not appear to be much different, but if you're using programs to parse the files and program is looking for an end of line, then things may get fouled up. You can use the DOS to Unix and Unix to DOS commands to convert back and forth. And lastly, as a teaser, Macs are an entirely different ball game. Pre OS X, Macs used only a carriage return and no line feed. And when Apple went to OS X, which is Unix based, they switched to the Linux style of just using the line feed. For more videos on Linux tips and tricks, make sure you watch these videos here. If you're interested in learning more about Linux command line, watch these videos here. Make sure you click on the blue monkey to subscribe. Thanks for your time and happy hunting.